All right, so uh, I was just just another update video on this arcade cabinet I've been working on. Kind of a slow going thing, but it is a budget thing, and um, it's something I'm kind of working on a little slowly. But I have not given up, and I don't intend on it because it's something I've always wanted, <laughs> at least for as long as I knew you could make them. Um, so uh, I did a quick coat of paint on it a while back. Just to see, just to give an idea of what it may look like when I'm done. But I also did get a second player control uh, thing, you know, buttons and stuff. I just need one more set for each because I have more holes and I'm drilling for a few more buttons. I've um, got a hole sawed and punched a few holes in there. Um, and yeah, so I just, I got lighting for the marquee. Um, I don't have any art for it yet. Um, it's actually a remote uh, light thing. So I did cover it over a little because I kept turning it on and I'm an idiot. I blinded myself with it. It's very bright, but I don't know if you can even see it. Yeah. So I kind of covered it over so it doesn't look like much, but that's because I have a piece of cloth over it to stop myself from, from you know, making myself blind. Um, but yeah, it has this little remote. So I can turn the marquee on and off from that. And uh, what else did I do? I did uh, quite a few things. Um, you know, oh, I, you know, because I'm using a Steam Link in here, uh, I, I was really, I would never tried this. Nobody's really, well, at least nothing documented. Nobody's really tried this before, uh, like, and have documented it at least. And so I didn't know how the buttons were going to work. And I, I wired up the first set, and those worked fine. I just had to map them out and everything. They worked in the Steam configurator and everything. And I wasn't sure about the second player buttons. And I bought those. I got them sent over. There's a USB uh, no delay uh, buttons. And I wired those ones up, and uh, they work great. Uh, when um, launching a game, they... Uh, Steam Link just kind of combines it, it, it. I guess it notices it's, it's the same uh, kind of buttons or the same you know, button layout, or whatever. And it goes, okay, and then it basically uh, takes all your mappings that you have and it applies them to the second player uh, stick. So everything's fine. You don't have to remap everything and all that. So that worked out great. The only thing I have to do is uh, for, I'm using RetroArch and in RetroArch I have to uh, configure each individual game I play. So I just have games in my favorites and uh, I have like a whole ROM set but um, what I do is I have you know my favorites and those are the games I play the most and if, if somebody mentions or shows a game on YouTube or something and it looks really good then I just look in, in the uh, ROM set and try to find it and then I'll, I'll configure it and it's normally very easy to configure. I did set like um, well I could show it um, so here I have Mortal Kombat 2. I actually also have, on each side, I have two different, I have artwork for each side, um, for depending, you know, per game. So I load up Mortal Kombat 2, and Mortal Kombat 2, and I have speakers too, that, that's another thing. I didn't have speakers before, but now you'll see that I have artwork on the sides. Uh, that uh, pertains to the game. Um, so I thought that was cool. I died. I suck at this. I mean, I really. I don't even. I don't even know how to touch a button. Anyways, so I don't even remember what I was talking about. Okay, so I have this uh, set up in the Steam um, configurator. So if I hold, if I long hold Start, it brings this menu up and then I can actually map it uh, in. So it says input this machine and I can just tap on that and map out all the buttons for player one and player two. And then once that's done, I set that's all set up. And I can just go back here. I could also go into dip switches and uh, raise the volume of the game. And this game is actually by default very low. So, but yeah, that's, 
That's that one, so and if I launch Mortal Kombat 1, I have a Mortal Kombat 1 artwork, and all the buttons are configured for that. And all that fun stuff. And um, let's see, what else do I need to do? I need to... Um, let me let me get out of here. I also have it mapped so that I can just kick myself out of the game by long holding the select button. And then it just boots me back to the menu. So there you go. And um, so you get out of here. Uh, so the things I need to do are um, I need to get the team molding. I was going to go with chrome team molding. So around, so it's kind of the accent molding stuff that goes all the way around here, across here. Gives it a really nice look. And of course I need to paint it properly, you know, full actual paint job with instead of just a, what I have here. Um, I need some plexi. I'm going to put some plexi over here, over the, the screen. And I need the marquee. So I need artwork for the marquee. And I need to put the plexi is sandwiched in between the plexi. And then that's that. And um, with the plexi, I want to have something that's going to cover up the, the uh, black and, and, you know, the borders there. So I'm probably going to have some kind of, I'm going to put some kind of something over that. I don't know. Some form of uh, maybe design tape thing. I don't know. See what other people did, have done. Blah, blah, blah. And like I said, I need new, uh, other buttons. Also going to put two holes in the sides here and put two more buttons because I just want to make sure I have enough buttons. Um, and I need side art. And I need to label the buttons. Um, so I got, I got other stuff to do. I also want to make the... Um, a lot of people like to hinge the back on. What I want to do is have it kind of almost like vacuum sealed. And then I can just take the back off, straight off. But it'll stay in place, but I just want to be able to take the back straight off if I need to do something and put it aside so it's never in my way. So even when, you know, it, if you have it on hinges, you open the door, it could get in your way, you bang your arm or whatever, I don't know. But, you know, it, I've had things like that get in my way, so I just want to be able to take the back straight off and put it aside. And then um, that's that. Uh, another thing, actually, that I did is just wanted to point this out. If you ever have run into this issue, the buttons that I bought were too big for the holes, so I had to widen the holes out, and I use a hole saw. Um, if you use a hole saw, you can't just stick it in an open hole that's already been created, because it will just the hole saw will just bounce around, and you could actually hurt yourself. Um, but one thing I actually was able to do. So I took a paint stick. This is cheap. wasn't even a dollar. I took a paint stick. I put the hole saw through the paint stick and created like these little wafer things. And then I put it, uh, centered it over the hole and glued it with like crazy glue. And then I was able to take the hole saw and, and uh, this kept it still. And I was able to widen the hole with that. So there's just a little tip if you... If you have uh, buttons that are too big for the holes and you want to widen them, of course you could always just like cut it up with like a, you know, you could just use like a, I don't know, a, a Dremel or something and do that. But I like the, I, I found it to be a lot easier once I had the hole saw, it just zip, zip, it was easy. So that worked well. Um, so that's that. Oh, I want to show some, uh, show some of this two player shit going on. Uh, have let's do Mortal Kombat 1 this has all been sanded too so it's ready to, it's smooth and ready to be painted and stuff unless something else happens then I have to sand it again I don't know but so we're gonna okay sometimes some of these games they oh that's cool all right let me undo that Okay, that was weird. Anyways, we hit start. And of course, I'm not math for players. <laughs> um, oh, it actually took player. Okay, so yeah, there is a, like with RetroArch, it, it kind of does weird things, but. Oh, oh wait, no. Well, that's weird. Okay. 
No, I wanted to show two players. But uh, let me boot myself out again. Maybe I didn't set, because I just did set this up. Maybe I fucked up the, the mapping. Let me go to a different game. I gotta look over that, but let me just go with Mortal Kombat 2 again. Oh, fuck. You know what I'm doing wrong? Again, with Retro Arch, it, the first button that you press is the player one, so that's what I'm fucking up here. So I press player one. There. I gotta actually press a button on player one, and then I can press a button on player two. Okay. Okay, so now we have player two. Alright, so now you see there's two players, so... So yeah, you can't press this until you press this. Unless you want this to be player one. But yeah, so we have... Yeah, that's all working. Block, block, low kick, low kick, yeah. And then there's that, and... So yeah, that all works. It, it, it works very well. Um, there's that. And uh, what is there anything else I was going to show? So yeah, all the buttons are mapped exactly. The only thing you gotta do with this is you have to make sure that everything is plugged in exactly the same in the board where you plug in your buttons or else it, it no matter what you do, when you map player one in the Steam's uh, mapping tool, in the, the actual, oh cool, it froze. Sweet deal. All right. For some reason it froze, whatever. Um, but uh, I'll work on that too. Um, but uh, I'll show you what, what I mean. What I'm talking about here. Let me back out of here, get to the end. And I'll back completely out of steam. Stop streaming. So that I can show exactly what I mean by this. So you go into the settings. You go to controller. Controller. And you'll see this is these two are seen as Dragon Rise. Player 1 is Dragon Rise on top. Player 2, they're both seen exactly the same but they're sent as player one and player two. If I map this one way, it also maps the second player the exact same way. And then, so if I try to map them separately, I can't do it. Uh, so everything gets mapped exactly the same when I map the first player. So mapping the first player maps also the second player. So if I have this plugged into the board slightly different, uh, any buttons are a little different, then it's not going to work right and it's going to be a problem. So you have to make sure that every button is plugged into the exact same spot on both boards. So there you go. There's that. So, But that's that. And uh, also it's very important that you have a home button somewhere because if you don't, then you need to have like your Steam controller or something, you know, hanging around or... Maybe Xbox controller or something because um, it's very helpful to have the home button. Once you get the home button and all that, I really just I put my Steam controller aside and uh, I don't need that really anymore. But um, then, of course, there's also the ability to play other games too, such as Ultra Street Fighter 4. 4. And. Uh, that works with multiplayer, so does Mortal Kombat 10. So, all that's good. So, yeah. And then you just have to, I mapped it out in the uh, Steam configurator so that it, it uh, was correct. I had problems trying to map it in the game. Plus, if I, I want to have it so that if I have an Xbox controller, I want to play it on my couch. I don't want to change the mapping. And then when I sit down with an Xbox controller, it's loud. Anyway, so uh, I want to... Okay. I want to sit down with an Xbox controller. 
and have it all screwed screwed up so the Steam configurator did a good job of uh, allowing me to have a separate mapping without changing anything. Um, so I go to Versus and uh, Player versus Player, whatever. Player one, press start. Okay, so start on lower fifth, then player two, press start. So now we have two players. Kind of like how Retro Arc works, you have to press the button for, you know, the first player has to press the button. Oh, lock. Okay. So there we go. And we are, we have um, two players now. Um, hit random, I don't give a fuck. I'm just, just, I'm just demonstrating shit. So the mapping for each game is duplicated. So both are mapped out the same. Uh, so that's that, and then if I want to get out of here, I just hit the home button, and then I can just kill the game, if I can do that. So that's that. And that's that. So, uh, I mentioned, let's see, I'm trying to think of if I mentioned everything I need to do. I think I did. Um, yeah, so I mentioned basically everything, um... And then I think eventually I'm going to get a table to put this on because I don't want to leave it here. It's, you know, I got a cord going across my living room table and it's taking up space and it would be nice to be able to eat there. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to get a table and put it next to my TV. Eventually I want to do is I want to build a, um, something I have already, uh, is a PC free capture card inside of it. So I can actually, I'll, I'll put a hole in the side and then I can actually press the button and then, it, you know, to record. And I also am gonna have I'm gonna bring get like a USB extension cable so I could plug in so I could put another hole in the side and then plug in a USB cable into the side of the cat the cabinet and I could press a button record and then when I'm done I pr press the button again and pull the drive and put it into my PC and start editing or whatever so you know that was something that was like more of a long term goal that I'm not concerned about right now but it was something I really wanted to do and I thought it was cool. And uh, something else. Um, oh, that was just a volume thing. I just need to get. I, I'm going to drill a hole on the side, on that side, and uh, extend the volume from the speakers. Um, I actually put uh, computer speakers in there, just cheap shit ones that I had in a, in a bin, and they actually sound better if you just leave them um, inside the cabinet without any, you know without letting them through because it actually it kind of muffles it and because they have this kind of lack of a low end sound the muffling actually works to its advantage and makes it sound fuller and stuff so I'm just going to leave it inside the cabinet uh, so yeah there's that uh, plus the the wood kind of amplifies it is wood wood amplifies noise it's cuz I play guitar and the one thing I was always taught was if you don't have a guitar amplifier you rest your fucking you rest the uh, the body of the guitar on a piece of wood, and it'll actually amplify your sound, and you can play through that. So, yeah, that's something. Um, another thing is I want to actually try to pad the uh, area where your your palms rest right here because it does kind of after a while it does start to hurt your palms. So I want to put a little padding there so that that doesn't happen. Um, so that'll be all right, and then, yeah. And what's cool about this, too, is that it does support Bluetooth controllers, so you can actually have more than two players. Um, so which is why I was thinking of uh, HDMI out was another thing that I was thinking of. So I have a splitter, and I can actually take the splitter and, uh, you know, more holes in the side and have an HDMI out on the side, and then I can plug it into the television, use it as if it were a console or something. It's so cool because I have it next to the TV, and then I can just plug it straight into the TV, 
and use it like a console and sit on the couch, or I can go over to it and play it uh, on the, uh, the actual machine, which is, I think, what I'd be more likely to do. <laughs> But, I don't know, that just sounds cool to me, even though it's probably not something I would really do much. It just sounds so fucking awesome to me. Just to me. I don't know. <laughs> but I think a lot of stupid shit sounds awesome. Um, so, yeah. But, I have a lot of ideas to do with it in the future. Um, but right now, I have the bare minimum that I gotta get working. And that's just... You know, I'm still working on getting the art for the software side. So getting the artwork is showing up on the sides and all that. And deciding on what I want for art artwork on the sides and on the uh, marquee. And how I'm going to get the uh, buttons to uh, be labeled. So there's that. And that seems like everything. So everything's working out really well. I'm really happy with it. Um, I was, in my mind, I was going to start this, I was going to screw up something totally fucking terribly, just completely awfully, I was going to have to take the thing and scrap it, because I sucked that much, I was going to be like, I fucked it up, why did I waste my money, and I was just going to take the shit and throw it to the curb or something, but it seems to be going very well, so it's the complete opposite, I'm actually fairly happy with it, so, you know, that's, that's that, so thank you for watching, um, and, uh, I also want to make, put out a video of, uh, you know, parts that, once I finish this, I want to show parts and things that you can get to make one for, like, because everybody was like, oh, you have to spend $900, but, you know, I've, I did have a list before of things that you can get to actually get this going for actually under fucking 150 bucks, um, but uh, I did that on my phone, and my phone deleted it. So I have to redo that, but I want to complete this fully so that I know that it's an adequate list. But yeah, that would I thought that would be a really cool video. So even though this doesn't actually cost only, uh, you know, that, I did, you know, spend a little more on some things. But um, I wanted to put together a video just showing, like, going online and showing things that you can get to actually make an arcade machine. Um for actually less than 150 bucks, not much less, but you know, less than that, and at least less than 200. So, thank you for watching.